Hello students, a very very good evening to all of you. Welcome to my channel. This is a very important class on African novelists and today we will talk about a female novelist, Nadine Godimer. But before starting, I want to give you a brief introduction about myself. My name is Vishnu Mukherjee. I have qualified NTA UGC NET exam in English literature four times and have also qualified West Bengal state examination. I have three years of teaching experience. Moreover, I have also taught in NPTA online course from IIT Madras three times. So that is all about myself. This is the link of my telegram channel. The link is also given in the description box. So those of you who have not joined yet, please join to get notification of all important classes. And also please don't forget to like, share and subscribe my YouTube channel so that many more new learners can join. These are the timings of your classes, Monday to Friday at 8.30 p.m., Saturday, Sunday off. So don't forget to join me live. Please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notification. Good evening, Ektava. Good evening, Elena. Welcome. So uh, let's start. We have already discussed um, Chinua Achibi as a novelist and as an essayist. So in today's class, we will talk about another African novelist, uh, uh, which is Nadine Godimer, and she is a female novelist. So first of all, start with her biographical details. Uh, Nadine Godimer was born in Gauteng, an East Rand mining town outside an East Rand mining town outside Johannesburg on 20th November 1923. She was born at Johannesburg. She was an active member of anti-apartheid movement. She also joined African National Congress. This is very important. She received Nobel Prize in 1991. Good evening, Puja. Welcome. Yes, Happy New Year, Elena. Uh, she received the Nobel Prize in 1991 and uh, she is very important because she is a white writer but still she is uh, sympathetic to the cause of blacks. Being a white writer, she was sympathetic uh, to the cause of blacks and so uh, she also wrote about those black people of Africa. Uh, she participated in many social issues uh, like HIV causes also. And this is another important information. She helped Nelson Mandela to write his famous speech, I am ready to die. The name of Nelson Mandela, you all have heard. There is no need to explain it. So this particular woman uh, helped Nelson Mandela to compose his uh, speech, I am ready to die. And generally, Godimer's novels are uh, mainly based on social and political issues love, psychological and moral tension, stories of ordinary people. So yes, uh, she talked about the black people in her novel. So automatically the problems of black people, the societal condition, uh, issues of love, psychological trauma, tension, all these things are part of Odimar's writing. Uh, okay, that's great. Yes, uh, ESART is just launched. Good evening, Papi. Welcome. Okay. So, first of all, you need to know uh, before understanding Nadin Godimar, what is anti-apartheid movement? Apartheid, uh, apartheid kya hai or anti-apartheid movement kya hai? This is a very important uh, uh, section of African literature also. So, first of all, apartheid kya hai? The term apartheid refers to institutionalized racial segregation that existed in South Africa and South West Africa from 1948 to 1990. In a single line, you can define apartheid in this way. So, it is a kind of racial segregation among the people. So, what kya kaha gaya tha? Ki South Africa must be dominated by the minority white population. You all know that in Africa, black people are a majority in number. But uh, according to the apartheid law, which was said that South Africa will be dominated by white population who are minor in number. And this segregation, racial segregation uh, was also done on the basis of facilities and social events. 
for example in different uh, festivals or um, any kind of national events black people were not allowed to take part in uh, any kind of facilities which is given to every social member uh, those things are denied to the black people so is type ka situation us time mein tha and apartheid uh, time mein apartheid rules mein kuch laws enforce kiya gaya jaise first apartheid law mein ye bataya gaya tha ki mixed marriages will be prohibited in 1949 it was mentioned that mixed marriages will be prohibited mixed marriages means that uh, no african black man or woman can marry a white man or white woman this kind of mixed marriages are prohibited uh, <clears throat> mixed marriages are prohibited in 1949 and ek dusra act bhi pass kiya gaya tha in 1950 population registration act so according to this act the whole a uh, group of people in south africa they are classified into four groups black white colored and indian char part mein divide kiya gaya and according to that the facilities the privileges all these things have been uh, had been segregated many africans were removed from their homelands ye kaam bhi kiya gaya tha and aur kis type ka exploitation chal raha tha ab dekho yahan tak humne bataya apartheid this is apartheid so apartheid basically means a kind of segregation on the basis of race or caste which was popularly done in south africa and the western part of south africa by the white uh, people or the colon uh, or the colonizer that, that was apartheid ab anti apartheid mein kya aati hai ab dekho is type se unko uh, marginalized kiya gaya these are the examples of the torture क्या एग्जाम्पल है कि साउथ अफ्रीका एंड साउथ वेस्ट अफ्रीका दीज आर फार्दर डिवाइडेड इनटू वेरियस सेपरेट नेशन स्टेट्स फॉर ईच कम्युनिटी अब अफ्रीका में देखो कितने सारे ट्राइब्स हैं वी हैव ऑलरेडी रेड थिंग्स फॉल अपार्ट इन चिनु आचिबी थिंग्स फॉल अपार्ट बाई चिनु आचिबी वेर आचिबी हैज ऑलरेडी लेड डाउन अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डिस्कशन ऑन द रीच ट्राइबल कल्चर ऑफ अफ्रीका ठीक है तो उसमें हम सिर्फ ओमोफिया विलेज के बारे में बात करते हैं एक पर्टिकुलर ट्राइब के बारे में बट उसमें भी देखो ये रेशियल सेग्रीगेशन की बात उन्होंने कहा ठीक है एट दैट टाइम इट वाज आल्सो वेरी पॉपुलर रेशियल सेग्रीगेशन सो डिफरेंट कास्ट एंड डिफरेंट पीपल बिलोंगिंग टू वेरियस रेसेस दे लिव इन सेपरेट पोर्शन ऑफ and women are uh, doubly marginalized humne discuss kiya tha so wahi baat yahan par bhi ho raha hai according to apartheid law ek to racial segregation kiya gaya hai between black and white aur black people ke beech mein bhi segregation kar raha hai ab dekho isse kya hota hai you are trying to uh, you are trying to um, destroy the unity of the black people or the tribal people which uh, which was actually done by the christian missionaries in uh, things fall apart so ye bahut ek devastating cheez tha for the black african people because their community is also subdivided into different tribes ek ek tribe ek ek community ban jate hai and wo dusre community ka enemy ban jata hai theek hai to is type se setting kiya gaya tha uh, due to apartheid and or kya hai 13% of the unproductive land was for the blacks unproductive land wo deliberately diya gaya tha black people ko ab is type ke exploitation ke against me jo movement hota hai wahi hai anti apartheid movement and it was also known as boycott movement so in this movement the black people they are trying to protest against all these exploitations and they demand equal status uh, like the white people so basically anti apartheid was a british organization who supported the black people okay and godimer was a part of that organization that is why i am saying that being a white woman she was very sympathetic to the cause of the black africa तो वो इस इस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का एक एक्टिव मेंबर था एंड दैट इज व्हाई शी टुक एन एक्टिव पार्ट इन एंटी अपार्थिव मूवमेंट ओके सो आई होप दिस इज क्लियर एंटी अपार्थिव मूवमेंट अब हम आते हैं उनके मेजर नॉवेल्स 
The first important novel is Lying Days published in 1953. Lying Days published in 1953. So this is her debut novel. It is a semi-autobiographical Bildungs Roman. Look, two genres ek saath hai, semi-autobiographical plus Bildungs Roman. And the main character ka naam kya hai? Obviously a woman character is there named Helen. She is the heroine. She is a young white woman. She is a young white woman and this novel is set in a small mining town of Transvaal. Transvaal ek jaga hai jahan par ek mining town hai usme iska setting. So basically this novel The Lying Days uh, talks about Helena's development uh, as it is a Bildungs Roman. So it, uh, it is talking about the development of the protagonist. Basically her growing political awareness and how she tries to free herself from lower class racial prejudices but she fails ultimately so she is a white girl and she is trying to protest against all sorts of prejudices against black people uh, all sorts of um, misconceptions against black people and also the uh, friendship or the um, Cooperation between black and white people, ye to bahut saruri hai, but iske upar ek misconception tha, ki white people, they are much more civilized, they are much more modern, so they should not mix up with the black people, otherwise their uh, caste or their community will be polluted. So all these prejudices have been challenged by this little uh, young girl, uh, young woman, Helen. And Helen is trying to go beyond all sorts of things, but prejudices are so much strong in society that she ultimately fails. She is gradually getting aware about political scenario and she realizes that these things cannot be eradicated because these things are very closely associated with uh, our mindset or interpolated into our mindset. Good evening, Jyoti. Welcome. So, Yehi hai in this particular novel, The Lying Days. In a brief summary, it is talking about the journey of Helen and how Helen ultimately fails to control all those racial prejudices, lower class racial prejudices, jisko uh, wo believe nahi karte the, but she cannot control its growth. Okay. Second novel pe hum aate hai, Occasion for Loving, published in 1963. Occasion for Loving. So it is also a novel and just like I have told you in the theme, Godimar's novel is not only talking about social and political issues but also talks about love and psychological trauma. So in this novel, the theme of love we get to see it is talking about a forbidden romantic relationship, a relationship that is considered as taboo. So again, a white uh, um, uh, a white woman is the protagonist and Davis is the name of the white woman who is married to an entomusicologist, Bose Davis. Entomusicologist, Bose Davis. Okay. Later what happens, she falls, uh, she falls in love with a black artist named Gideon Shivalo who has failed relationship. Now the story complicated. Ho jate hai. A white woman, she has fallen in love with another man, Bose Davis. It is uh, right. But uske baat ek complication start hota hai ki being a white woman, she loves a black artist. Uh, jiska naam hai Gideon Shivalo. And Gideon Shivalo is also devastated, also dissatisfied having so many failed relationships. So the novel is talking about that kind of... Um, Different and forbidden. That is why it is forbidden romantic relationship. Because I have told you that in the apartheid mein ek act tha, marriage act, mein ye bataya gaya hai ki mixed marriages must be prohibited. So this kind of relationship uh, should not be considered valid by the society. That was according to apartheid law. So in that way, this novel is based on the relationship between Anne Davis and Sh uh, Shivalo, the black artist is also forbidden, is also going to be failed. So, this is a story. Hai. And uh, there are two epigraphs. There are two epigraphs which are taken from Boris Pasternak and Thomas Mann. Boris Pasternak, jinka famous work hai Dr. Zivago. 
वी ऑल नो एंड थॉमस मैन का जो फेमस वर्क है दैट ट्रांसपोज्ड हेड्स ठीक है तो एक रशियन राइटर एक जर्मन राइटर इन दोनों के वर्क से दोनों एपिग्राफ नॉवेल का लिया गया है दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अच्छा तो अब इस टाइम का क्या मीनिंग है हाँ मैं जो बता रही थी एथनो म्यूजिकोलॉजिस्ट दिस इज अ वेरी न्यू टर्म टू यू पर तो एथनो म्यूजिकोलॉजी इट इज अ ब्रांच ऑफ म्यूजिक और ब्रांच ऑफ द स्टडी ऑफ म्यूजिक एंड कल्चर तो बेसिकली इट रेफर्स टू द स्टडी ऑफ म्यूजिक फ्रॉम अ पर्टिकुलर कल्चरल ग्रुप और फ्रॉम एनी पर्टिकुलर कम्युनिटी तो इसको हम कहते हैं एथनो म्यूजिकोलॉजी एंड जो इसको स्टडी करते हैं वो होता है एथनो म्यूजिकोलॉजी तो इट इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द कल्चरल सोशल एंड मटेरियल बैकग्राउंड ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर कम्युनिटी एंड हाउ म्यूजिक ओरिजिनेट्स फ्रॉम दैट तो बेसिकली इफ समवन इज गोइंग टू स्टडी ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर टाइप ऑफ म्यूजिक फॉर एग्जांपल फोक म्यूजिक और हिप हॉप म्यूजिक एंड आल्सो द कल्चर ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर एरिया द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन म्यूजिक एंड कल्चर एंड आल्सो इन जनरल सोसाइटी तो ये सारी चीजें आते हैं इथनो म्यूजिकोलॉजी के अंदर तो Uh, it it is very important that uh, you must know about the community जिसके म्यूजिक आप स्टडी करो सिर्फ म्यूजिक को जानना जरूरी नहीं है बाकी उस कम्युनिटी के बारे में उस सोसाइटी के बारे में आपके पास डिटेल्ड नॉलेज होना चाहिए सो दिस इज अबाउट एथनो म्यूजिक ओके तो चलो वापस आते हैं सो दिस इज अबाउट दिस पर्टिकुलर नॉवेल ऑकेशन ऑफ ऑकेशन फॉर लविंग 1963. These are not so famous minor novels. Next novel pe aate hain The Conservationist. Ye important novel hai. The Conservationist published in 1974. So in this particular novel, it is talking about also a particular culture that is Zulu culture. Zulu is the name of an African tribe. You have heard the name, I think. So it is based on Zulu culture, and obviously setting is during apartheid. Uh, और एंटी अपार्थिड मूवमेंट तो मेन कैरेक्टर का नाम है मेहरिंग हु इज अ रेसिस्ट वाइट बिजनेसमैन अब एक मेल प्रोटैगोनिस्ट हमें मिला है मेहरिंग इज अ मेल प्रोटैगोनिस्ट हु इज अ रेसिस्ट पर्सन मतलब रेशियली वेरी प्रेजुडिस वाइट बिजनेसमैन ही इज वेरी डिससेटिस्फाइड विद हिज लाइफ हिज वाइफ हैज लेफ्ट हिम एंड गन टू अमेरिका सो ही इज साइकोलॉजिकली डिस्टर्ब्ड मैन एंड आल्सो वेरी डिसेटिस्फाइड इन हिज फैमिली लाइफ एक तो उनकी वाइफ उनको छोड़कर चले गया दूसरी बात क्या है Uh, he proud uh, he feels proud to be homosexual and at the same time he criticizes the orthodox ideas the traditional beliefs those racist uh, opinions of his father ab mehrin kya karte hain mehrin buys a 400 acre farm outside the city just to draw attention and to give some meaning to his life so mehrin ka character bahut hi important character hai is a desperate person and samjho wo ek businessman hai but no one is giving any importance to him he is a white man still he feels marginalized ab ye bahut hi ek peculiar feeling hai ki aap jante ho ki aap society ke ek highest uh, hierarchy se belong karte ho highest position se belong karte ho still aapko koi uh, importance nahi de raha so it creates a great feeling of void in your life your existential crisis starts so so mehring ka bhi ek existential crisis chal raha tha and that is why he just buys a 400 acre farm ye show off karne ke liye ki uske paas kitna wealth hai wo kitna popular hai ki wo aaj agar you chahe to you ek land kharid sakte hai 400 acre it is not very small area right so a big farm land he is just buying there is no proper purpose behind it just to show up just to add some meaning to his life taki log unke unko lekar kuch baat kare 
कि भाई देखो इसके पास कितने पैसे हैं कि आज मतलब इंस्टेंटली uh, उन्होंने 400 एकड़ फार्म खरीद लिया कोई तो बताएगा उसके बारे में सो ही इज वेरी डेस्परेट टू गिव मीनिंग टू हिज लाइफ टू एड सम पर्पस टू हिज लाइफ दैट इज व्हाई ही डज सच थिंग जैसे ओकोंग को हैज मेड अ डेस्परेट अटेम्प्ट टू किल इकिमे फुना only to prove the fact that he is not like his father he is not effeminate he is not coward uh, he can take drastic steps uh, for the welfare of his community is baat ko establish karne ke liye unhone ek, ek young boy ko apne bete jaisa ek bacche ko unhone maar diya just to prove the fact that he is not coward so it is also a desperate attempt of okonko to uh, be separated from his father jo wo bachpan se koshish karte the so mehring ka bhi same cheez hai yahan par theek hai acha next kya hota hai absolutely he has no idea about farming a farm house so unhone kharid liya ab show off karne ke liye kharid to liya lekin usko lekar karenge kya ye baat bhi sahi hai farming ko unko nahi aate so mehring ne ye socha ki kyun thoda sa aur पैसे आ जाए आई विल एम्प्लॉय सम ब्लैक वर्कर्स टू वर्क इन माय फार्म अंडर ए वेरी स्मॉल पेमेंट एंड उसके बाद जो भी ग्रेन क्रिएट होगा जो भी ग्रेन प्रोड्यूस होगा उस प्रोडक्शन पूरा का पूरा मेरा है तो प्रॉफिट तो मेरा ही है सो ही हैज डिसाइडेड टू स्टार्ट फार्मिंग विद द हेल्प ऑफ सम ब्लैक वर्क एंड ही बिहेव्स लाइक अ वेरी सुपीरियर पर्सन तो ऑटोमेटिकली पीपल डिसलाइक हिम अब देखो जो आप बॉस हो आपके अंडर अंडर में जो काम कर रहे हैं इफ यू ऑलवेज ट्राइंग टू शो योर सेल्फ एज मच सुपीरियर देन देम सेल्फ एंड दे आर नॉट एज ह्यूमन इवन तो आपके जो भी को वर्कर्स है आपके जो भी कलीग्स है वो आपके साथ काम नहीं करते यू शुड गिव प्रॉपर रेस्पेक्ट टू देम यू शुड बिहेव फ्रेंडली विद देम ठीक है तो हमेशा बॉस लाइक एटीट्यूड नहीं रखना बट मेहरिंग इज डूइंग द सेम रॉन्ग थिंग मेहरिंग इज ट्राइंग टू प्रूव हिमसेल्फ वेरी सुपीरियर एंड द ब्लैक पीपल दे आर नॉट इवन कंसीडर्ड एज ह्यूमन बीइंग्स बाय अब क्या होता है एक दिन एक ट्रेजेडी हो जाते हैं जैकोबस अ ब्लैक वर्कर फाइंड्स अ डेड बॉडी ऑफ अ ब्लैक मैन ऑन द फार्म सॉरी इन द फार्म होगा इन द फार्म तो फार्म हाउस में एक ब्लैक पर्सन का डेड बॉडी मिलता है वो आकर मेहरिंग को बताते हैं कि वन ऑफ आवर वर्कर्स हैव डाइड ड्यू टू सम रीजन तो अब हम क्या करें नाउ मेहरिंग इज टोटली अनमूव एंड नोबडी केयर्स अबाउट इट जैसे देखो लास्ट में क्या हुआ था व्हेन ओकोम को हैज कमिटेड सुसाइड इवन द पीपल ऑफ हिज ओन कम्युनिटी इज नॉट रेडी टू एक्सेप्ट ओकोम कोस बॉडी और टू गिव हिम अ प्रॉपर बेरियल तो वही बात यहाँ पर भी चल रहा है कि एक ब्लैक पीपल ही तो मरा है एक ब्लैक मैन का डेथ हो गया है तो कौन सी ये कौन सी बड़ी बात है अगर वो व्हाइट मैन होता तो सोच ले ब्लैक मैन मीन्स इज कम्प्लीटली इनसिग्निफिकेंट अगर वो गया तो अच्छी बात दैट काइंड ऑफ थिंग वॉज पॉपुलर एट दैट टाइम रेसिस्ट प्रेजुडिस ठीक है तो जैकोवस जब आकर ये बताते हैं मेहरिंग को कि एक ब्लैक वर्कर का डेथ हो चुका है मेहरिंग कह रहा है कि कोई बात नहीं है हो गया है हो गया है उसके बॉडी को फेंक दो कहीं बाहर नो बडी केयर्स अबाउट इट देयर इज नो पुलिस केस कि डेथ क्यों हुआ है कोई इन्वेस्टिगेशन नहीं है एंड अ फ्लड ब्रिंग्स द बॉडी देयर बाद में इसको एक्सप्रेस uh, करते हैं मेहरिंग कैसे कि ये मेरे फार्म हाउस की घटना नहीं है बाहर से डेड बॉडी थ्रू फ्लड यहां पर आ गए हैं तो दैट इज व्हाई but mehring has tried to manage the situation before the whole world that's fine but he has some kind of guilt consciousness in him so he is haunted by that thing that particular dead body he has seen inside his farm uh, maybe the body was distorted a little bit because death hua hai kuch karan ki wajah se koi injury tha theek hai so mehring is haunted by the fact of the death of a black man वो दुनिया को तो बता रहे हैं कि भाई ये मेरे फार्म हाउस के कोई कोई वर्कर नहीं था ये बाहर से आए फिर भी वो अपने आप अंदर में उसके अंदर एक कॉन्फ्लिक्ट चल रहा है यस एब्सोल्युटली राइट एक दवा एब्सोल्युटली सो ही इज हॉरिफाइड बाय द घोस्ट ऑफ द डेड मैन अब देखो साइकोलॉजिकल डिस्टरबेंस क्रिएट हो रहा है द अदर वर्कर्स गिव हिम अ प्रॉपर बेरियल दो ही इज अ स्ट्रेंजर टू देम तो बात बिल्कुल सही है कि 
जो जिस ब्लैक मैन का डेड बॉडी मिला है वो उसी फार्म हाउस में काम नहीं करता ये बात सही है जो मेहरीन ने कहा बट स्टिल ही इज अ ब्लैक पीपल सो द अदर ब्लैक वर्कर्स हु वर्क इन साइड मेहरिंग फार्म दे गिव हिम ए प्रॉपर बेरियल बिकॉज सेम कम्युनिटी है तो आउट ऑफ सिंपैथी आउट ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटेरियन ग्राउंड वो लोग इनको एक बेरियल दे Mehring gets the hint that his own burial will be less emotional than that of his man. अब एक दूसरे question Mehring के मन में आते हैं कि yes, जो एक तबाह ने अभी कहा है कि he takes all the credits of the farm work, so all the black farmers work hard with dedication. तो यही बात Mehring को एकदम at the last of the novel he is realizing that I have uh, done nothing for these black workers. If I die today in uh, at this moment will the black people care for me will they give me a proper burial or they will throw my body just as i have ordered to throw the body of the black man so he is uh, in that kind of existential dilemma so it's a beautiful novel talking about the consciousness or the subconscious mind of a white racist man ki kaise the dead um, the dead body of a black people uh enlighten him with uh, a lot of uh, emotion or not only emotion but uh, retrospection on his own work so this novel won booker prize and mcconnell prize for fiction that is why it is very important the conservation is next novel pe hum aate hain burger's daughters ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट नॉवेल है नादिन बोदीमार का मोस्ट फेमस नॉवेल बर्जर्स डॉटर पब्लिश्ड इन 1979 दिस नॉवेल वाज बैन्ड इन साउथ अफ्रीका ये जरूर याद रखना है इस नॉवेल को बैन कर दिया गया एंड आफ्टर द बैनिंग बोदीमार रोट एन एसे इन रिस्पांस टू दिस बैन तो एसे का नाम क्या था व्हाट हैपेंड टू बर्जर्स डॉटर हाउ साउथ अफ्रीकन सेंसरशिप वर्क दिस इज द टाइटल ऑफ द एसे This novel has references to Nelson Mandela and 1976 Soweto uprising. A historical background hai iska. Burger's daughter. And basically it is a uh, it is a respect it is dedicated to Bram Fisher, a lawyer who defended Nelson Mandela and other anti-apartheid activists. Ye jo lawyer hai Bram Fisher वो एंटी अपार्थिड लोगों के लिए काम करता था दैट इज वाई नवीन गोदिमर हैज डेडिकेटेड दिस नॉवेल टू ब्रैम फिशर तो नॉवेल क्या है जोहानसबर्ग इज द सेटिंग जहां पर उनके अपने बर्थ प्लेस है जोहानसबर्ग रोसा बर्जर इज द मेन प्रोटागनिस्ट हर फादर लियोनल बर्जर वॉज ए मार्टर इन द एंटी अपार्थिड मूवमेंट ठीक है हर मदर ऑल्सो डाइड वेन शी वॉज फोर्टीन so uh, she was an orphan girl rosa burger she lives with her adopted brother bassy but later bassy is sent elsewhere for uh, a different work so rosa ab akela ho gaya then rosa sells the house aur koi rasta nahi tha unke paas to unhone apne ghar bech diya and uh, she buys a new flat she loves to apan leave hoga she loves uh, she loves to live in her own flat and takes the job of a physiotherapist so she takes the job of a physiotherapist now she comes to know about an incident where a black university student refusing all helps from whites okay so jaise boycott movement chala tha uh, hamare indian freedom struggle mein ki uh, to to boycott or to refuse uh, all sorts of foreign products तो सिमिलरली यहाँ पर उन इन रोजा बर्जर एक न्यूज सुन रहा है उस टाइम में कि एक यूनिवर्सिटी स्टूडेंट अ ब्लैक स्टूडेंट ही इज डेलीबरेटली रिफ्यूजिंग टू टेक हेल्प फ्रॉम द वाइट्स वो एक बॉयकॉट मूवमेंट कर रहे हैं मूव स्टॉप फ्रांस एंड फॉल्स इन लव विथ बार्नार्ड कैवेलियर बार्नार्ड कैवेलियर के साथ एक अफेयर स्टार्ट होता है रोजा का रोजा मीट्स बैसी बट ही अनोइंगली स्टार्ट्स क्रिटिसाइजिंग हर फादर एंड फाइनली शी रिटर्न्स टू साउथ अफ्रीका देन व्हाट हैपेंस अ ग्रुप ऑफ स्कूल चिल्ड्रन स्टार्टेड अ मूवमेंट इन जून 1976 प्रोटेस्टिंग 
अबाउट देयर इंफीरियर एजुकेशन तो ग्रेजुअली प्रोटेस्ट स्टार्ट होता है जो एंटी अपार्थिड एंटी अपार्थिड आइडिया है वो ग्रेजुअली स्टार्ट होता है फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अ ब्लैक यूनिवर्स अ ब्लैक यूनिवर्सिटी स्टूडेंट देन अ ग्रुप ऑफ स्कूल चिल्ड्रेन दे आर आल्सो प्रोटेस्टिंग टू टेक देयर इंफीरियर स्टेटस ऑफ एजुकेशन टू रेबेल अगेंस्ट देयर इंफीरियर स्टेटस ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड दे स्टार्ट किलिंग द वाइट वर्कर्स साउथ अफ्रीकन कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी वाज आल्सो बैन एट दैट टाइम तो देखो ये बहुत ही पॉलिटिकली वेरी डिबेटेबल एंड कंट्रोवर्शियल नॉवेल है क्योंकि इसमें बहुत वायलेंस दिखाया गया है एंड ओपनली द अफ्रीकन पीपल दे आर प्रोटेस्टिंग अगेंस्ट द वाइट पीपल तो इसी कारण के वजह से इस नॉवेल को बैन कर दिया गया था पार्जर्स डॉटर बट यस इट इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट नॉवेल ऑफ नवीन गोटिक राइट अनदर इम्पॉर्टेंट नॉवेल इज जुलाईज पीपल पब्लिश इन नाइनटीन Julius people it was also temporarily banned not totally temporarily banned it was set in post apartheid era so julai is a male black servant who works in male family theek hai wo ek black servant hai lekin wo jis family pe kaam karte hain they are white south african so obviously racial conflict starts julai's uh, wife name is martha The Smales family are forced to leave. Uh, यहाँ पर ये leave होगा. Forced to leave Johannesburg and comes to the native village of Julai. So basically, Smales family वो Johannesburg में रहते थे. But कुछ कारण की वजह से वो अपने mother country को छोड़कर वो Julai के गांव में आ गए. ठीक है. Later what happens? Maureen, the wife of Bramford Smale, has to work in the field along with Martha and Julia's mother, because they has no other way to survive. They has no other way to survive. ठीक है. So Maureen, uh, Maureen ये बात कर रहे हैं. मतलब Maureen को ये काम करना पड़ रहा है. Though he is the wife, though she is the wife of a white person. she has to work in the field along with black people like martha and julia's mother she cooks foods in clay pots meats are very rare theek hai and uh, teen male children ki hum baat karte hain victor royce and gina they quickly adopt themselves in this new place and as they are children they do not uh, know about all those racial politics so they become very close with all those black people and gina becomes the best friend of naiko naiko is a black uh, child so uske sath bahut acha dosti <coughs> dosti ban jate hain and then kya hota hai an aircraft lands in the village so jaise humne lord of the flies mein dekha ki the parachute man so usi type ka ek symbol hai ek aircraft aate hain no one is sure whether it is from friends group or some enemy then morin runs to the plane with her children and want to be taken into that morin desperately uh, trying to get into that aircraft and there the book ends with no definite conclusion there is no definite conclusion to life's speech it is not unfinished but uh, no conclusion is provided at the end of the story acha it was in your master syllabus then grade it but yes it is very beautiful novel both the novel the conservationist and julai's people very beautifully written so maine text to nahi padha hai but i uh, know the story and absolutely the story is very beautiful yes absolutely right agar aapne padha hai to bahut achhi baat hai so that kind of open ended novel julai's people नेक्स्ट वर्क पे आते हैं द हाउस गन पब्लिश्ड इन 1998 इट वाज आल्सो सेट इन पोस्ट अपार्थिड इरा तो इसमें कपल की बात हो रही है क्लोडिया एंड हैरोल्ड लिंगर क्लोडिया एंड हैरोल्ड लिंगर दे आर कपल एंड दे आर सन डंकन हु इज मर्डर दिस डंकन इज नॉट मैकबेथ डंकन ओके सो डंकन इज द नेम ऑफ देयर सन ही इज ऑलरेडी मर्डर्ड so this novel basically talks about the increasing crime rate in south africa dekho har novel mein social and political problem ka ek description hai good evening um tarani welcome gun is a common ingredient in every household 
at that time gun is a very common ingredient in every household the couple is very much concerned about the lawyer who is black and they think that he will not give justice that was same kind of racial prejudice is there so unke son ka death ho gaya murder ho gaya ek case chal raha hai court mein but the lawyer is black so the parents are very much in doubt that this this black man whether he will be able to give them justice or not so ye ek bahut bada question hai in this novel the house gun that how far can we trust the black people and is it actually uh, is it actually correct to uh, create suspicion uh, for a particular group of people on the basis of their skin color or caste तो ये क्वेश्चन नदीन गोदीमर ने अराइज किया है इन दिस पर्टिकुलर नॉवल नेक्स्ट वर्क पे आते हैं द पिक अप पब्लिश इन 2001 तो इसमें मेन कैरेक्टर का नाम है जूली समर सी इज अ शी इज अ वाइट वुमन फ्रॉम अ फाइनेंशियली सिक्योर्ड फैमिली स्टेबल फैमिली बट एक्सीडेंटली हर कार ब्रेक्स डाउन इन अ साउथ अफ्रीकन स्ट्रीट ठीक है तो नॉर्मली जो हम क्या करते हैं अगर कार बीच बीच रास्ते में खराब हो जाते तो वी डेफिनेटली लुक फॉर अ मैकेनिक लुक फॉर अ गैरेज तो दिस वोमेन इज आल्सो इन सर्च ऑफ अ गैरेज एंड एक पर्सन के साथ उनका मुलाकात होता है जिसका नाम है अब्दू एंड अब्दू टेक्स सॉरी हार होगा अब्दू टेक्स हार टू द कार नहीं ही में होगा ची uh, मतलब जूली इज टेकिंग अब्दू टू द कार Abdu is an illegal Arab immigrant in South Africa, and how this uh, thing has been considered. So, this type of novel, she falls in love with him and also marries him. His visa is rejected, and they move to an unnamed place. Okay. Now, us place me ja kar Julie ko jo struggle karna hota hai. That is actually the main plot of the novel. How Julie has to, uh, how Julie had to struggle to adjust herself in that new location. That is the main uh, idea, main theme of the novel. This novel is also important because it won Commonwealth Writers Prize for the best book from Africa in two thousand. Okay. Last work of today's class that is Get a Life, published in two thousand five. Get a Life. So. इसमें बेसिकली क्या है एक ऑटोबायोग्राफिकल टच है एंड दिस नॉवेल वाज रिटन आफ्टर द डेथ ऑफ हर हस्बैंड गोदीमर्स हस्बैंड रेनहोल्ड कैशियर ही आल्सो सफर्ड ऑफ कैंसर तो एक एलिजी टाइप का नॉवेल है पॉल बैनरमैन इज द मेन कैरेक्टर मॉडल्ड ऑन हर हस्बैंड शी इज अ ही इज एन इकोलॉजिस्ट ही इज डायग्नोस्ड विद थायराइड कैंसर जो उस हस्बैंड के अपने हस्बैंड के साथ हुआ था वही वो फिक्शनलाइज कर रहे हैं He is undergoing a radiation therapy. So cancer का जो treatment है radiation लेना वही चल रहा है. But ironically, he is exposed to nuclear health hazards at his own home. During radiation therapy, वो एक nuclear hazards के अंदर पड़ रहे हैं and that is why uh, very very ironically he is trying to set up a nuclear plant. But finally, he feels very isolated and upset for his wife. because he is going to die very soon so this is about the novel get a life okay so these are basically the major works of uh, radin godimer uh, but the ma- most important novels are july's people burger's daughter the conservation is peoples okay so i have summed up the novels in a very brief manner so that you can get an idea of the outline of the text because it is not possible to read each and every novel right so you just need to know the background the characters what is the main theme okay so uh, if you have uh, any book on african literature then please go through that uh, portion of nadin god okay so that is the end of today's class thank you all for joining this is the link of my telegram channel the link is also given in the description box so those of you who have not joined yet please join to get notification of all important classes so we will meet again tomorrow at 8:30 pm uh, so don't forget to join me live please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get uh, okay thank you all bye bye everyone good night see you all tomorrow at 8:30 pm